Hello, citizens. Uh, we are very, very blessed on this show to have a bunch of different people that are always... What, now, why do you laugh right away? Well, we're blessed in many ways, Mike. We are I didn't, blessed. I didn't think you would go that direction. We're, well, every time, you know, every every morning when I get out of the every shower. Every day is a blessing. No. Well, we have, our, we have our friends. Yes. We have our family. We have our health. Yes, we do. Mm. Mm. Uh, so anyway, what, one of the things I love is that we've always got people sending us stuff, and we've uh -huh. got, we're out talking to people, and we're finding things out. And the fact that we live in the nation's capital uh, allows us to find certain things out that are better than others. Now, Buzz yesterday uh, got a, what we call a scoop in this business. Pretty excited yes, about it. Yes, pretty amazing. A very underreported story, in my mm -hmm. opinion, was the fact that there were some protesters. One guy that climbed up 40 feet into a tree right. to uh, protest I the president's uh, inaugural address. A lot of people don't report on this because a lot of people aren't blessed. I. Uh, y well, that's true. <laughs> that's right. You're absolutely right about that. But the fact is no that um, I was down there, and I heard these protesters. Yeah. And it wasn't just the guy in the tree. There were people all over mm -hmm. the grounds of the Capitol. That, you know, they were, it was like putting out brush fires continuously. Right, right. Because the President of the United States was speaking, and uh, I don't know how Buzz came across this. We at the Mike O'Mara Show have actually gotten our hands wow. on a separate audio track. Enhanced audio? Uh, an enhanced audio track of the inaugural address, because you really didn't hear mm. the protesters. They sweeten it, and they edit those it, things out. It speaks very well of the park police, who were keeping everything under control down right. there. Yeah. There were microphones everywhere as well. Mike's everywhere, sure. and, and what, what we didn't realize as we were listening to the speech, and this shows you what a pro he is. Right. The president could hear it loud and clear. He mm -hmm. was, you know, it's directed at him, of and course. he could actually hear these uh, these protesters, sure. and they were obnoxious. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just the guy in the tree. There were other ones as well. Right. And the thing is, what I didn't realize listening to it, I, I don't know how they do this, but he paused more what do you uh, mean? Be, because, do you think because running, of the protest. Do you think there was some sort of... Some sort of compression being uh, run? I don't know what it was, Because Rob. they can do he anything Hearing now this with track, technology. it seems like there were long pauses. Well, it, it, the, the bottom line is, if you, we've got the track, and we'll, <laughs> yes. we'll, we'll let you be the judge of it and, and see what's happening. See but what we, you think. This yeah. is the, uh, it's not, it, I guess it's raw, but it had separate microphones. Whatever it is, right. uh -huh. it allows you to hear both the protesters and the speech. And I thought fascinating. It was yeah. absolutely one of the most mm -hmm. fascinating pieces of audio that I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. let's, just, uh, let's just roll the track. All it right. speaks for itself, I think. Vice President Biden, Mr. Chief Justice, members of the United States Congress, distinguished guests, and fellow citizens. Each time we gather to inaugurate a president, we bear witness to the enduring strength of our Constitution. Yes, sir. We affirm. Yes, sir. Oh, boy. Is that you? We affirm the promise. Counselor. We affirm the promise of our democracy. Come out, come out wherever you are. We recall what binds the nation together is not the What binds this nation together is not the color of our skin or the tenets of our faith or the origin of our name. What makes us exceptional, what makes us American, is our allegiance to an idea. They may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! Articulated in a declaration made more than two centuries ago. I want you to get mad. You've got to say, I'm a human being. We hold God these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they I are endowed you. by their creator up now. with certain unalienable rights. I want rights. all of you to oh get up God. out of your chairs. Can I get that guy to shut up? Yeah. I want you to get up right now. Among these, go to the window. Our life. Open it. Liberty. And stick your head out and, and yell. The pursuit of I'm happiness. I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. Today we continue a never-ending journey to bridge the meaning of those words with the realities of our time. For history tells us that while these truths may be self-evident, <laughs> they have never been self-executed. But while freedom is a gift from God, it must be secured by His people. Here on earth, God and God, like the patriots of 1776 did not fight to replace the tyranny of a king with the privileges of a few or the rule of a mob. They gave us a republic. Yeah, they did. And a government. Oh, you big thinkers, you. <laughs> by and for the people, entrusting each generation to keep safe our founding creed. Sweet and sour chicken. For more than 200 years, we have. Through blood drawn by lash and blood drawn by sword, we learned that no union founded on the principles of liberty and equality could survive half slave, half free. We made ourselves anew and vowed to move forward. 
Together. Together we determined that a modern economy requires railroads and highways to speed travel and commerce. School. <laughs> and college. To train our workers. Together, we discovered that a free market only thrives when there are rules to ensure competition and fair play. Together, we resolved that a great nation must care for the vulnerable and protect its people from life's worst hazards and misfortune. But we have always understood that when times change, so must we. That fidelity to our founding principles requires new responses to new challenges that preserving our individual freedom ultimately requires collective action Who wants to eat? For, the Who Amer- wants to eat? for the American Who people to can no Hooray! more meet the demands of today's world by acting uh, alone. And the uh, American soldiers could have met uh, the forces of fascism. This uh, generation of Americans uh, has been tested by crises. We understand that outworn programs are inadequate to the needs of our time. We must harness new ideas. Let each of us embrace with solemn duty and awesome joy. What is our lasting birthright? With common effort, common purpose, passion, dedication, and us answer the call of history and carry into an uncertain future a precious light of freedom. Thank you. God bless you. May he forever bless these United States of America. It's the Michael Mara Show. You can listen to the Michael Mara Show at www.michaelmarashow.com. Stay tuned for an outstanding entertainment program. It's the <laughs> Michael Mara Show. Let's get down to business. From the entertainment capital of the world. Hi there. Are you a large person? Pleasantly plump? A little on a hefty side, perhaps? Well, let's face it. Are you fat? When you go jogging, do you leave potholes? When you make love, do you have to give directions? At the zoo, do elephants throw you peanuts? Do you look at a menu and say, okay? Well, now you can eat all you want. Because at Thornton Mellon's Tall and Fat Stores, we've got you covered. That's right, fine woolen. And woolen blends suits and sport coats in all the larger sizes. Husky, stout, extra stout, and the new Hindenburg line. And for you ladies, we have caftans, moo-moos, and our own exclusive A-frame in all colors and patterns. Yes, we have miles and miles of fabric. So take it from me, Thornton Mellon. If you want to look thin, you hang out with fat people. Thornton Mellon's Tall and Fat. 150 locations across America. Lou, did you see the new spot? Yeah, I seen it. Do I look fat in it? You could lose a couple of pounds. I gotta get bigger actors. Coming to you live from Michael Mara's living room studio in the historic radio district of Manassas, Virginia, a bustling suburb of the nation's capital, it's the Michael Mara Show, featuring Buzz Burbank with Rob Spiewak and Oscar Santana. And now, from his couch, here's Mike. We are live from the Cappy Fiber Studios. This is the Mike O'Mara Show, downloaded worldwide 70 million times, and powered by Encore Insurance. We are at MikeO'MaraShow.com, 102.9 FM, WTNT in Washington, D.C., and the mighty 1630 KCJJ in Iowa. I like KCJJ in Iowa. I like that. Our show today is brought to you by the Amazon page at MikeO'MaraShow.com. It is the number one way to uh, power our show. Mm -hmm. And when I say power it, I'm talking bucks. Yes. Dollars. Gelt. Dinero, ladies and gentlemen. Dollars, Uh, dollars, dollars. Real simple. For those of you that have never heard this before, if you want to buy something online, there's no better place to use than Amazon. And there's no better way to get there than going through our page. Real simple. Two clicks. Mm -hmm. Actually, technically, really one click. With a kill. And you go to our page. We have an Amazon link, and if you buy all your stuff with no difference in the price at Amazon, mm-hmm. only a great price for you, right. you get some money for the Mike O'Mara show. I That's got the a way note, it works. I got a note from someone who bought bunk beds on Amazon, and they didn't have to lug them home. They were delivered to their How door. Cool is that? Just I, buy bunk beds. I was shopping for recliners again. Because I have to get rid of that recliner I have. Why? Because it sucks. It's pretty new. It sucks. <laughs> is it because you took so it apart? Huh? Election, is it because you ripped it apart election night? <laughs> it's just. It's I remember. <laughs> it's just not good. What was it? Was it you lost your smart smoke election I, night? And yeah, I'm yeah. going to find it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> went over. Buzz and I went to uh, Bullwinkle's house for a uh, party a week ago. <laughs> right. Yes. And when we went there, uh, I sat. Oh, you big thinkers, you. <laughs> I sat in Jimmy's recliner, yeah. and I went, okay. This is what I want. You were sold. Yeah. This yeah. is what this is. I want. Do you know the brand? Be, 
Uh, I have no idea. May but, I recommend to you the Lazy Boy 10421? It's a great chair. <laughs> is that what you wow. had? I had it for years, yeah. Do you have any furniture that's... Uh, well, your furniture's all been in radio stations, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's only some of my furniture <laughs> came that from works. radio stations. What, uh, what were you going to say? Well, I, I just... Um, growing up, and I don't know if it's a cultural thing, but Latin, at least my Latin American family and my uncles and cousins, they never had recliners. I'd only see them at my white friend's house. Right. <laughs> and I didn't know... Well, we're lazy people. Well, I, didn't, I don't know what makes a great recliner. Well, let me tell you... I, you know, right, I mean, you know what? Let me get through this. Okay. Go right. to Amazon, michaelmarishow.com slash Amazon. Mm -hmm. uh, share the link with your friends and family and help us out. And yes, uh, do. So, so re please allow me to you know, put a down payment on another recliner. You this know one, what they have now, and I've yes. seen them. Maybe I'll sell the one I have. Power recliners. What's that? Yes. Power recliners yeah. that you plug into the wall. And I just keep I thinking this is something that will break. Yeah, no no, no need for that. that you that's... just want the, 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 the handle yeah, action the or handle the pushback or, or whatever the, the, the way it is. But the fact is... Uh, you know, the power recliner is, to me, a cord to nowhere. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, no, no. See, I have one. And what it does is it silently... Of you do. Listen to this, though. It silently adjusts your chair to exactly where you want it. Not some predetermined locked-in position, but where you want it. What you kind? See, what brand is it? Boy a Lazy Boy. Yeah. You have a Lazy, lazy Boy? boy yeah. yeah. Lazy Boy's always been at the well, forefront. Why are we giving Lazy Boy a commercial when they haven't given me a recliner? <laughs> That's yet? true. Uh, so anyway. Yet. Get it through Amazon. But this thing, yeah. I, bought, I bought. I buy my furniture cheap. As you know, the stuff you sit on in this studio is cheap. Furniture. No, not all of it. I, well, Mine one, is expensive. Yours is expensive. Mm -hmm. Thank uh, God for that, Mike. I feel wonderful. That's from back in the day. Right. And that's why you don't need to use extra cushions to prop yourself up. That's right. But you asked me what my problems are with the recliner. Mm -hmm. The problems are with my recliner that it's too wide, so you're mm -hmm. not... Hey, when look I, at you. When I sat in Jimmy's recliner, I felt like I was in an airplane, airplane cockpit, Ooh. and that's the way I like it. I like right. it to, I like it to really snug, snug you a little yeah, bit. Right. You Meanwhile, know I mean? Buzz, Buzz is with his power recliner. It's like being in a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, oh, right by the home. way, I know man, please. we're going a mile a minute, but uh, get well wishes to our friend RJ, yes. yeah. who had a, another problem uh, with his plumbing, uh, but he's home, and he's resting, and hopefully he'll be uh, doing well with that, and and we wish him the very best. Yes, Wanted to pass course. that along to R.J. Diaz, who is uh, still, you know, dealing with some plumbing issues that he had uh, when he had his prostate deal. But mm -hmm. it is not the big casino, no, so no, he no. reassures me that is. You spoke to him today, Mark. Right? I, I did briefly, yes, and, and he, he says he's doing okay. He's just resting. He's today. resting. So Good. get well soon, R.J. Yeah. And uh, you know, he, he called me and he said, uh, "Mike, it's R.J. I wanted to call you before the rumors started." Yes. Mike. Rumors? The, the, the rumors? Well, you know, hospital employees. The rumor, yeah. Jack, I, I don't yeah, know what he was concerned about. Like, I was on TMZ. I saw almost no mention of it. I mean, it's, you know, I said, RJ, don't, please don't talk about rumors the same week we're dealing with Beyonce. Yeah, please. Uh, but anyway, we'll get to that. Mark, if you show. get a chance, go to all the uh, Diaz message boards okay, yeah, and see what right the now. fans are talking about. Get well soon, RJ. Yeah. We love you, and we hope you're, uh, you're going to do well. On the program today, uh, we got an awful lot to go over. Uh, the inauguration, uh, that's yesterday, Mike. How about we go back to the, uh, now see, I'm trying new technology. Oh, you mean he's, he won again, right? Yeah. Still well, President Obama? The inauguration is still in play because yes. Beyonce. Yes. And, and having, I think, you know, look, do I, do I agree with the Facebook people that are saying this is much ado about nothing? Yes. Do I agree with the people that this is BS? Yes, it is. However, I want to talk about it because uh, when, she's hot? when I watched the Today Show no. defending her... In totality, because those privileged a holes were down there, right. you know, on the street with a great bird's eye view of everything, mm -hmm. and it's their show. So, in a way, mm -hmm. they're defending their TV show they when they defend it. Yeah. They're defending not objective. Yes, right. I'm down there with my feet throbbing mm -hmm. in the stinky, unwashed masses down there <laughs> listening to the president, and I want the live show, okay? Right. Yeah. If I'm getting a taped performance when you and your multi billionaire, uh, you know, rapper are inside the Capitol, enjoying creature comforts and warm weather, and then you have to come up for about a half an hour, put a scarf around your throat, <laughs> and sing the goddamn anthem for free. We're going to get to that because I okay. got a lot more to say. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, so we'll talk about Beyonce today. Also, if we get a chance, uh, Movie Corner, uh, we have always uh, seen uh, mm -hmm. lots of movies on this show. Buzz has seen movies, Oscar's seen right. them, I've seen them. Sure. We'll have kind of a pre-Oscar roundtable, and of course, Rob on pay-per-view was able to uh, review Frank and Weenie. Hey, I bought it. Uh, I bought oh, it through wow. Amazon. 
good for you. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of, I run from that. A lot of Oscar uh, buzz on Frank and Weenie. Yeah. I, think. I waited for I hockey. I wish the Oscar buzz would shut up in this room. <laughs> <laughs> I waited for hockey Horrible now. It's movie. killing me. Super Sunday. Beyonce. Uh, guns keep killing me. Ray Lewis. Still controversial. Uh, could we get snow? And uh, Rob writes for TV with our uh, new show coming up. So let's begin with, uh, with Beyonce. Look, I, I know everybody's thinking this is not a, a, a deal. And I to wish, set it up, do yes. you want to hear the very compelling Scott Pelley? And remember, you can't be compelling without Pelley. Let's you want to hear the, how they covered it on CBS last Let's night. Listen. Beyonce's performance of the national anthem at the inauguration got rave reviews, but today questions were raised about whether she was actually singing or lip syncing. Whatever. Source is telling us that Beyonce was singing, Beyonce. Live, Beyonce. but over a pre recorded track. She recorded no. that track earlier in no. case something went wrong. Yes, she recorded and the musical. All right, turn it off. All right, all right, shut up, shut up. Scott Pally, God, <laughs> idiot. That. You anyway. don't care for him? No, I mean, it, the, confirmed today, right? Confirmed today that she did indeed lip sync, right? They say sources. Uh, what, the, what they're doing is she is so powerful. Her camp is making sure you don't know what they're... Oh yes, my God, of I'd, course she lip sync. I would love okay. to go to her camp. <laughs> she <laughs> yeah. lip That would be like sex camp, but Oscar better. Santana. I was always curious how this actually worked out, because I, I know that... Uh, most hip hop acts or R and B acts, because there's so much dancing involved, right? Uh, they're they're singing to a track, yes. Right? Right. So I get that. But if you're in front of uh, the president, uh, the leader of the free world, and all those dignitaries, exactly, are you still singing in that little realm? You have to be, and then what goes over the PA is a track, correct? Uh, or does it is it a mesh? I watched it again today. She was singing, uh, uh, whether or not it was mic'd or not, because you can't lip sync. You and can't lip sync the way she did. And if it is a perfect lip sync, uh -huh. she did a damn good job. Because yeah, I watched I, it this morning. I I tell you this, uh, it's super. This is not. The Super Bowl. True. This mm -hmm. is performing for the President of the United well, States. This is true. And performing on in history, a yeah. track mm -hmm. is BS. Now, look, they'll say, well, Yo Yo Ma did it. Well, they did it because if they had carved into their instruments, the strings were going to snap because it was that cold out. Right. Mm -hmm. So that was absolutely necessity. And they do have backup tracks and recording mm -hmm. if there's some sort of issue. But when you've got the other performers who are up there, like mm -hmm. James Taylor right. and Kelly Clarkson, Doing who are performing real. it Clarkson. live, there's no excuse because, the, mm -hmm. and I just let me say, right. All the accolades that came her way, mm -hmm. she was fine with those. Yeah. And now, you know, am I, this she is, I'm well. sorry, this goes back in, in American musical history to things like Millie Vanilli sure. mm -hmm. and people that BS. Now they'll say, well, Whitney's track was pre recorded. Mm -hmm. Well, when you're in the Super Bowl, audio wise, that is a much more difficult there situation with true. orchestration. Yeah, true. Not necessarily. Now, look, it's and timing. I, yeah. And I also come from a space, I know it's not a big deal, mm -hmm. but having sung. An anthem at a stadium. Mm -hmm. I know it. First of all, it's doable, yeah. and second of all, when you're at the inauguration of the president of the United States, I think you don't. If you can perform it live, you perform it live. That's and an issue. That's something that not a lot of people have brought up. Could she have done it? Live? Of course she could. But would she have sounded but she, like but that? But she, but she would have. There been... was a lot of clever shifts. That was yeah. Some, there was some show off singing there that would have been really hard to do. Probably if you didn't have maybe just a little boost. Well, what's your take on it? Because I'm curious about. I think that the Today Show was saying, you know, and she could. Oh, Natalie Morales, who really, mm. oh, who, who has l more, l less going on between those ears. You know, when she went, well, she could have been sick. That's true. She it's like you're That's sucking, guessing, yeah. you're yeah. sucking up to celebrities. Yeah. Beyonce's a, a talented lady. Yeah, she's a. I think she's a very uh, you know attractive woman. We all know that. Sure. But you know what? The, she <laughs> got, take it easy, Brent. She got. <laughs> <laughs> she's a beautiful girl. <laughs> that is Love man. That. If you wanna, <laughs> if you wanna get the girl, you start singing rap in, in the in the hood. <laughs> That's that, right. That rap Early. music. <laughs> yeah. So. My feeling is, having been down there, right. it's the same thing for saying to say to all those hundreds of thousands of people, why do you go down there? Yeah. Because you're showing respect for the office. You want to be in a moment of history. And I think, uh, to me, it's just kind of a... It's a real letdown, and I think she ought to you, be called. I echo what you just said, and I think really what I am is mostly uh, I don't care. But right. if, if we're forced and to, forced the only to make a fist, the only reason I do you were there is because I was there. Right. But forced Understood. to make a fist, if she had said she should have come out already and revealed exactly what happened, and she could have this behind her. Right. Um, and does she have a nice behind? Hey, she, hey, hey, she hey, does. hey, hey. And she should have. Yeah. It would have been a problem no. if when she was singing the anthem, if she pointed at her ass. <laughs> I think that would have been a problem. 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 That's the revenge. But, she certainly yeah. could wear her 80 carat earrings. Yeah, that's you know? true. I mean, yeah. if she had revealed it, now it's a problem. Yeah. And also, all 
Eli's are going to be on her at the Super Bowl. I, so but good also, luck. you know what? Look, I know we like to build up and tear down in this country. Mm-hmm. I know we do. But I, the fact that she's had a free ride. She's had a completely free ride. Yes. And, uh, you know, that's, that's fine. No scandals. No nothing. I mean, she's, mm-hmm. uh, she's Beyonce. Right. Royalty, really. Yeah. So, yeah, go ahead, Oscar. Uh, the only thing that, that really bothered me, and I think this, this would be whether it's Beyonce, whether it was like Kelly Clarkson or James Taylor. Right. Uh, uh, it, it was that she took that earpiece out. I want to ask to, about to, it. Dramatically. To, dramatically to make it seem like she was singing live. And for me, if you're going to kind of play it safe, <laughs> yeah. then just play it safe. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It, well, well, I, I don't there was like... something in the earpiece that was throwing her off. It looked like, but if she's lip syncing, it, it, you know, it, she, it, yeah, Buzz is right. Mm-hmm. She could be lip syncing, and the and, track is wrong. And the track she, is wrong. And, 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 and I'm yeah. wondering, the ripping out of that earpiece does that uh, contradict or substantiate the theory that that she was lip syncing? Neither. Look, I don't know whether she was lip syncing or not. Nor do I care. She was there. The song was beautiful to me. That's all that matters. Uh, but but I do think she should be honest. Uh, I, I don't understand the, the but, huge but controversy I guess about an that. Also, because her camp's not responding to it. Th- right. Also that's a, bad. A side to this Beyonce uh, and again we didn't answer if they <laughs> sing live and then what we hear is the track because you got to be you have to be singing around those people correct well I right. think what was happening and from watching it she was singing because she was emoting and she was yeah. there was air uh-huh. moving I think she was singing if she was lip sync, she was singing and the mic was dead. Okay. Right. They and do that, that means, a lot. And that yeah. means That's what that, I wanted to yeah. figure out then how the people that around works. her could have heard her. She yeah. owes it to uh, the public to at least uh, make a statement of yay or nay and then after that, then we go, well, you had Whitney with one of the greatest versions of the national mm-hmm. anthem ever performed, mm-hmm. and that was recorded. Right. Sure. So you, you do that. But you don't dick us around like this. And I think that if you could have performed it live as uh, or sung live, and I'm not sure mm-hmm. what the song is, Aretha Franklin was uh, joking about it, the fact that she had performed live, Kelly Clarkson performed live, mm-hmm. James mm-hmm. Taylor performed live, right. and I think you uh, – here's the thing. The only issue I take with this is – She's taking all that fabulous credit that what an incredible live performance as someone who's mm-hmm. into music That's and fair. has performed live uh, musically and otherwise you say to yourself wow you know to do that live is just spe- spectacular because you're showing it's one of the it's greatest show off songs ever it's a big deal musically as well it's as a the big fact deal that it carries a lot of weight a just part, the song itself a part of me when I saw that performance and I'm sorry for cutting you off for sorry, I'm talking over you Rob um, when I saw that performance on TV, and you were there, Mike, yeah. and I'm sure you were moved by that performance. It was a, You stopped and listened to it mm-hmm. because you really said, and I, I turned around to Jimmy, and I said, man, she, she killed it. Yeah. I said, she Very killed pretty. it. And my whole, when I'm saying she killed it, mm-hmm. I'm basing that on one thing and one thing only. She killed it live. That's why I'm That's saying well, you when you, at the time. Because when mm-hmm. you're in a, in a situation like that, it does matter. For people that don't, yeah. don't care about music... It doesn't really matter. I said, pay- no, it matters to people that don't care, but it matters. That's my point. It does matter. I'm, ty- I'm tired of people no, giving do- her a free pass. It does matter. And when I watched it on TV, I, I paused uh, and I said, well, this is why she's Beyonce. This is why she's so – because she can walk out on – that platform exactly and sing like and, that and belt it out and you know what it's just she probably could I don't uh, Beyonce has been the, the knock on we'll the know. knock on Beyonce throughout her career is that she is you know super super over managed that she is super mm-hmm. you know hidden she mm-hmm. doesn't go out there you want to talk about laying it out there I watched the live performance of Alicia Keys who was uh, singing at the uh, one of the inaugural balls right and just her and a piano singing her hit and man. Out of the park. It was really astonishingly good and you know, to you, hit those notes. And to me, when you crap it out, you you can go in a studio yeah. and, and do enough takes to get well, it just right. Well, no, <laughs> not Oscar. Uh, about, about 50. Uh, thank God we don't do Reading it on tape Rainbow. anymore. <laughs> Both. Yeah. I, I heard Joe Biden was lip syncing. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll bring it to uh, kind of like a little uh, a microcosm of what you're talking about now. When you walk into a studio, whether it's this studio or anyone else's, and you get on the mic, or you're on a phoner with Andy Parks, or you're on a phoner, or you're on the junkies in the morning, when you do what you do, and you kill on those performances, I sit there in the same way I sat after I saw Beyonce perform, I said, this is why he's Mike O'Mara. 
Because That's he, very nice. I'll take that all yeah, day well, long. Because, and, and there's only a handful of people in this business that Which can more do, people in this room felt that That way. can do what you do. I wish you were on the junkies more often. Thank you very but much. But it's like if you recorded that interview and made sure it was perfect, right. and then they played it. Well, one of the You're things, doing it live. One of the things that's cool about Saturday Night Live is Working when you see yeah. that yeah. They're, they're doing that. Yeah, I laugh at their recorded mm. stuff, too. Uh, but it's mm-hmm. fun, you know, to do it just the way we, right. we do it. I right. mean, it's one it, of the you few, know. one of the few great things Lauren Michaels has ever said. He says we don't go on because the show's ready. We go on because it's eleven thirty. Right. right, and you really do. You have that sort of uh, urgency to do it. The thing about Beyonce, she did a spectacular, almost tricky show off performance mm-hmm. but if she had gone out there and done it live and just stuck to the melody and nailed it it would have been just as good yes and app one you know what i'm saying but well, also she, the, she had some well, weird you think runs because she does the runs that she can't do those live i think she could have done I the think runs live even if she did it live that would be great but she didn't have to but also there's when I a hear, sincerity but here's here. the thing when i hear she was too busy Busy. Getting Very ready busy. for getting ready for her Super Bowl performance yeah. to re, re, you know rehearse with the Army Band was it the Army Band or the Marine Corps Band I don't know which one. Oh, that's why the, it was, it was, the, Marine, the, it was the, the Black Crows. So it, it was the Marine Corps Band. Yes. It was the Marine Corps yes. Band. I hear that and I go diva, 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 sure. diva. But you know what? From what you said, probably not her. Probably her camp. Her camp said, yeah. "You're too busy to do this. Uh, it's a know. song." And I think it's about time that Mike reveals that the Reno show, he did the entire show, he was lip syncing. <laughs> Except when he sang. No, we, right. we recorded it when he was sober. <laughs> Except when I, when I raised that bottle to my lips. <laughs> we'll take a break. Come back with more on the Mike O'Mara show. <laughs> Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, brought to you by Wait Not. Don't make a resolution, make a commitment. You made a commitment, and I'd like to talk today about uh, Wait Not, but at the same time talk about your TV commercial. Where can people see your TV? I've been mostly seeing it on the Today Show. Where did you see it, Mark? I did see it on the Today Show. We, uh, We do have, and I'll repost it, we had a link... On our fan page at Facebook, and we can also put one up on our website. Tune in and see how thin I am, and also see how ridiculous it is when I try to look serious. <laughs> Rob uh, <laughs> lost about 100 pounds on yeah. Wait Not because yeah. he made the commitment called Wait Not and took personal responsibility for his success. Now, Rob and Wait Not are challenging you to make that same commitment. Wait Not's commitment is to help you lose weight fast and in a healthy way that includes real food. And what I love about Wait Not, uh, you get uh, so many different stories, so many people at different levels, and people that do this, but if you use the principles that they teach you at Weight Not, uh, you hear a lot about the fast weight loss, but I'm here to tell you it's also an extraordinarily healthy way it mm-hmm. works in to put life. that food into your sure mouth. Is. You know what? We can, you can go to any restaurant. You can go to, even to a fast food place. And right. if you know what you're doing, you can stay on plan. It yeah. works in real life. You've time, it. time to look better, feel better, and be better. Call 855-WAIT-NOT. That's 855-934-4486. Or visit waitnot.com. Wait Not, show us what you're made of. This is the time of year, folks, that a lot of people get involved with weight loss. It's mm-hmm. after the holidays. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are going to do the same thing after after the Super Bowl. If you're looking yeah. for a solution, you want to get involved with it, Wait Not is the way to go. Uh, now back on the program. I think we've covered the Beyonce successfully. Uh-huh. Yes. Have we done that? Uh, also on the program, uh, let's get to Movie Corner. Because right. uh, we, we've all been uh, seeing our films. Uh, we I, have. Been I'm very busy. surprised, Buzz, that you uh, said to me the other day you went to see Les Miserables. Well, because I didn't go. Uh, oh, you, I thought you said you did. No, it came to my house. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. I'll, I'll be voting yeah, soon. You saw it. That's what. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. La la la. <laughs> I don't think my dues are current. That's probably why ah, I'm not getting the movies. That's very important. I think. Uh, <laughs> Keep up to that, please. Yeah, because uh, I thought you were both used to get the screeners for the nominees. I yeah. never did until this year. This after the edge, now. I yeah, I kind of said so long. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for nothing. What after are my the, after thanks my, for nothing. After my insurance ran out, yeah. I'm like, yeah. okay, bye right, bye. Right. See you later. Screw you. Who needs you? You know, that's thanks for your year. Your extra year. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, I think I've sort of told my dues to go to hell. What are the dues? Nah, the dues it are, depends. Uh, you know, it depends on how much money you make yeah. through the union. Right. Oh, wow. That's how it works. Right. Okay. Made a lot, a lot of money with the edge dues. You know? mm. uh-huh. Screw them. So you saw Les Miserables, right? I did, yes. What do you think? I think uh, it's not the best musical I've ever seen. And what I'll, is I'll, the best I'll, musical you've I'll, ever I'll seen? I'll tell you Greece. why. Cats. <laughs> 
You know, almost any of the well, except for Cats. Ah, uh, bring it to him, Mike. God, G- Jesus Christ Superstar is even a better musical than Les Mis is. Now, I, I will, thought he was I, raising his voice I, to me. I, I, yeah, me too. I, I, <laughs> let I, me tell you something Jesus about music. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. Christ Ron. I will tell you this. The performances, the, the actors who sang in that movie deserve supreme respect and recognition for what they did. The director deserves recognition. I'm not it's, sure whether I should let you review it since you didn't it's, see it in the it's, theater. It's not a best, <laughs> it's not a best picture. Jealous. Some of the songs were great, but they were strung with together with... How are you? I am fine. Look, if you don't have a melody for that part of the, st- the story, just have them speak the line. How did you like Sasha Baron Cohen in it? I was surprised and impressed. He's funny, isn't he? Yeah, it? yeah, he's great really good. He's, yeah. he's great in it. I didn't expect to see him he's, in a role like that. He's one of Mark's, you know. Uh, my daughters uh, <laughs> saw it with me for the third time. Wow. Oh, wow. So, uh, really? they, they like it a lot. Yes, uh, Oscar. I saw a third of it and left the theater. Yeah, I can see that. It's <laughs> pretty intense. Which third? The first third? The first third. Okay. Too, Too much singing? I, t- I sat there and I said, what am I doing? I hate this ass. <laughs> Rolled yeah, out. Yeah. How did I get I in here? Out. Yes. I rolled out. Most people that go see Les Mis don't use the phrase, I rolled out. <laughs> I really <laughs> wish. Like a boss. I, yeah. I wish I could make an argument. I, uh, like I do with comedies occasionally, uh-huh. where you suspend disbelief and you just want to dive in. I go. I went in psyching myself to get involved uh-huh. and get it. So I went all in and was able to enjoy it because of that. Uh-huh. But if I had been there just dealing with uh, the singing and everything that goes along with it, I might have had a nervous breakdown. Uh huh. It was that frustrating. For once, me. It was very difficult. Once, very yeah. challenging. And Hathaway pulls the Beth Ann McBride. <laughs> oh. I just said, shaves her hair. I said, oh. Or did she ruin a radio show? I said. I said. I'm <laughs> Gotta go. Look, I think the perform Anne Hathaway is amazing in it. Yes, I thought yes. Hugh Jackman was amazing in it. It's- Although I thought Russell Crowe was better than Hugh Jackman. In his uh, not role. A, not at singing. Oh, I really no. I no. Oh, so you didn't see it. Yeah. Well, either. I'm not a musician, and uh, it was it was tough. Uh, the The theatrical singing for Russell Crowe was uh, was a little bit difficult. Like uh, was it was speaking. a little bit tough. It was a uh, well. No, he just sings like that yes. the whole time. Oh, like Rex Harris, yes. soldier. It's just. Uh, uh-huh. it, I don't know. I give it a good solid six. That's six fair. out of ten. That's six. fair. Uh, you know, it was it was not for people that love that musical. Mm-hmm. I think people are going to be thrilled. People are going to be excited, and uh, you know, I think it's the performances to sing live to mm-hmm. camera right. with that with that camera right in your face. I think it's a pretty good. There musical. are better music. Historically speaking, musical theater doesn't work on film. There are very few exceptions where yeah. the movie is better than the stage. Well, oh, and Kathy, story. thanks for sending me uh, Fiddler on the Roof. I appreciate that. She sent me a DVD. Oh, There's another oh, one, oh. One, of the, one of the great musicals on film. Yeah, and, Fiddler, uh, and Fiddler and West, Fiddler. West Side Ray Story. West Side Story is very different on film than it is on stage. Okay. And, but I think well, they the, should have done that with this. And Well, also, it's, it's great to have a capture, a high-budget capture of one of the most successful musicals of all time. Mm-hmm. And beyond that, it might just be an exercise right. because it's a capture of that, and it's the way they envision it, and they wanted to make mm-hmm. it look on stage. Well, beautiful. Vision, but there's way. also a lot of intimacy to the story that I think is lost. What's the last movie live. you saw in a theater? Uh, I believe it was Clue. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> you, you don't go to the cinema, do you? Not very often. You no. should try. I, you know what? I think it had to have probably been a kid's movie. I mean, I how... will say that the nominated films, and I include Les Mis in this, it's uh-huh. nominated, mm-hmm. and I think... Uh, Really, uh, Lincoln, fabulous. Zero Dark Thirty, fabulous. But oh. the one that I can talk about for a second, we're done yeah. you know, covering yeah. mm-hmm. Les Mis, uh, The Silver Linings Playbook yeah. was yeah. Uh, was just amazing. Yeah. Despite really, your really hatred terrific. of Bradley Cooper. Uh, not, not, not in this movie. I thought his okay. performance is, is slap nuts perfect. Love I it. thought he really... he. This is the best movie about... I don't know anything uh, outside of my own mental illness about right. mental illness. <laughs> exactly. Really, so, all the years we spent together and you haven't figured it out yet? Uh, yeah, I got some theories. <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell you that my my feeling of this, I think this is the best, most honest, most nakedly refreshing mu- uh, movie about mental illness that okay. I've ever seen. I agree. Right. I thought it was absolutely amazing. It was really, really, just the performances were so real. Like, that's a guy... That's bipolar at its worst, mm-hmm. right? And I thought Bradley Cooper does a fantastic job. And great. Jennifer Lawrence, while you know, terrible on Saturday Night Live, yes, oh, I thought so I thought she was great in in the mm-hmm. movie. Now you've seen this also. I have. Yes. Have you seen this on a little DVD? Yes. Jesus Christ, yeah. I'm jealous. And he watched it, Mike. He watched it on a portable player as well. <laughs> it's a four inch screen. I have my iPhone. I yeah. watched it on my iPhone. <laughs> Did you have you been to the cinema, like the theater itself, recently? Uh, uh, yeah. What was the last thing I saw that was very, very disappointed? Well, it was. Uh, I think Argo was the last thing I saw. You it didn't was, like Argo? I it, listen. I, I thought it was good. Hey, listen, listen I, I didn't think it was worth going to the theater for. I would have enjoyed it at home more oh because it struck me as a very, very good TV movie of the week. No way. 
Hey, I thought it was terrific. Yeah, I we disagree. We disagree on argument. I, I actually disagree. wasn't as uh, disappointed as Buzz was, but I wasn't as. I mean, it was a good film, mm -hmm. but it, there was something about it that just didn't sit right. Did, with didn't me. quite cut it. It just didn't. You know what was? Do you think the problem was Affleck? Well, and and, and I resent the fact that we focused on a few privileged individuals who got Affleck. out of there in a hurry while yeah, ignoring it, while ignoring the larger number of Americans who were left behind. But in if, Iraq. I mean, that's that's a political look. But yeah. if you're looking at the movie as a film and a mm -hmm. storytelling, but here's what do you think the problem was? They freed them, Buzz. Yeah, so, I, so that's well, okay. Oh, Spoiler when did, alert. When did, when did that happen? That's just a couple of years. That's ago. great. Yeah, a couple of years ago. God bless him. Well, he was. Too busy. He was too close to the story. He was yeah. covering it. Thank you, Rob. I freed I, the hostages I, I for you, and that, now I'm dead. I had those hairdos. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I, I love that. I thought the story was great. Yeah. I thought the drama was great. I think you know the outcome, and when you know how it's going to end, and you can still create that tension. Yeah, I uh -huh. thought it was really well done, and I thought what it showed was the bravery of the Iranians that were uh, there in that day. I thought that's what I liked mm -hmm. about the movie. Right. I liked the story, and I think it should have been nominated. You just, you just uh, reminded me of something, is the fact that that and, well, Lincoln 2 and Zero Dark Thirty all have... They come out with a sequel? A sequel to Lincoln? For, for Lincoln. <laughs> Lincoln 2. Lincoln 2. It's Lincoln 2. Only this time, uh, but this time, the uh, Lincoln role is not going to be played by Daniel Day-Lewis. It's going to be played by James Franco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a you. It's a prequel. My least favorite actor in the world. He rolls out. It's a one. prequel. Yeah. Uh, but you, you're looking at movies that you know how they end which of the three movies did the best job of you know leading you up to an end that you know you know i liked les miserables i really did i liked argo i mm -hmm. love silver linings playbook mm -hmm. and i loved lincoln um i'm just gonna give credit to the epic and i gotta go with lincoln yeah i, I think, think lincoln wrong. is something i, I think that's phenomenal. must viewing yeah. for every citizen i yeah. think you should see that and see that our country hasn't changed all that much in right. all these years that we were going through that bs and the performance by daniel day lewis mm. you know is the gold standard nobody will ever play lincoln like like yeah, he did I'm he sure. did such a great job with that it's tragic though it took a movie like that and we i mean we work in manassas virginia Yes, we and do. History, I, history surrounds us. I'm on Grant Avenue. Yeah. yeah. That's where we are. Yeah, I, but I want to give your, your sound, house number. No, but I sounded like... <laughs> I just sounded sounded like Jesse Ventura. Yeah, you did. I'm on Grant Avenue. Don't you see? <laughs> Why do you You're think I live it here? It surrounds us. Yeah. Corner of Ulysses yeah. and Grant. I said to myself, I've always wiped my ass with the town of Manassas. Yes. Because I just said it was horrible. Thank you, and they appreciate Send letters that. to yeah. Oscar Santana. To That's right. But now I, I want to learn more about it. Yes. I want to learn more about the Civil War. You know what the most special thing of, about Manassas is? What's that? Not one, no. but two oh. battles. Two giant, right, right. two giant battles. Two giant battles. Two giant civil same war. Battlefield? Same area. Yes. And you know what else is First great? and second battle run. If yeah. you need used tires, mm -hmm. this is the place to go, or as we call it around here, Yantas Usadas. Or Peruvian chicken. <laughs> yeah. What do they call the Yantas used tires? Yantas Usadas. Checks accepted. <laughs> Yantas Usadas. Isn't that how yeah, you say Yantas Usadas? Used tires. Yantas no. Usadas. Usadas, not Usadas. I'm sorry, I took French. Usadas. This yeah. town should be a well, better town. <laughs> This should, should be a better town. I agree. Yes. I agree. Oh, look, and it starts today. <laughs> no, I had a bar here. Did I say so? I had a bar here. I know what a zit this town is. <laughs> I know what it is. It's, it's sad that it's not a better town. No. Yeah. No. This is this is. Uh, I go to I go to Jimmy's in Herndon, and I'm beloved because Jimmy's beloved. Right. I I couldn't be beloved on my own in this town. No, you're and, and I thought I was going to be the first son of Manassas, and it didn't work and out. You, and you were you you lifted heavy. You did. You worked so hard to do mm -hmm. this. And then when I lost my rest. Restaurant and I did my PR tour for like two years right. afterwards. Are going there are more people that hate me in this town, and it's based on you know, you suck. Yeah, you really. That's what I think of you. You <laughs> suck. When you when you go to the local watering holes, you yes. don't really make friends. I'm still, friends, I'm, still do you? I'm still, I'm still a prick. When you're I go to the you're local public watering enemy number one. I am definitely. There are a lot of people that don't like me. Aren't Good you the work. most famous? Thank you. Aren't you the most famous person in Manassas? I don't right now? give a rat's ass. You know what? This town is mean, and they're mean to <laughs> yeah. me. Yeah, that's I, like, I like when you're growling at a zit. They're mean. They're yeah, mean they're to mean. me. You know, yeah. it's like, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I drive down. And Herndon is just like, hey, man, I like that radio right. show. Hey, that buddy. That disc coming by to drink beers. This is going to be great. And Manassas, oh, here's Mr. He thinks he's all special. <laughs> he thinks he's all special. Do you think, he thinks he's special. Do you think Lick you, it. Lick it, you zit. Perhaps <laughs> when you when you had your, your fine watering hole, do you yes. think you set the bar too high for the clientele? No, I think that uh, what I did was, was I had an initial feet. very 
good run. Yes. Yes. And unfortunately, Jealousy. and unfortunately, it just didn't work out. I wasn't able to do the things I wanted to do. Right. And if I had to do it over again, I uh, would say, well, what would you have changed? I wouldn't change. I just wouldn't do it again. Really? Uh, I, because the bar... If, to but you be, got it out of your... It no, was a lifelong to, dream, But though. to be successful in the bar business, you have to be a bar person. You have to know how to run it. Mm-hmm. You have to be there. It has to be your business. Right. I would have had to do two full-time jobs, and I couldn't have done it. Right. But that's the way... That's what I would have changed well, to, you know. to do that. At the same time, we were having a discussion the other night uh, about the differences between this town and... And other towns, mm-hmm. and this right. town is just a handful. Yeah. It's a it's a little difficult. What to if deal you had with. the opportunity in retrospect to buy the bar again and then sell it eight months later? Oh, that would have been a nice move. <laughs> <laughs> See, maybe you could do that. Like a, yeah, yeah well, I like that. Buy Thanks, low, sell thank high. you, Bernie Madoff. I appreciate that. <laughs> Everyone from the old sod wants to own a bar just for a little while, Mike. So I think uh, the long and short of it is it is a town that's steeped in history, mm-hmm. but it's a missed opportunity. Oscar's right. Yeah. They could do a lot more with the history of this town, and we could have a lot of fun. So who knows? But I'm not going to cry over spilt milk. Nah. We'll take a break. Come back with more fun and more thrills. This is the Mike O'Mary Show. Zip. <laughs> Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. This segment of our program brought to you by Smart Smoke, the premium e-cigarette. Smart Smoke has the nicotine you crave with without tar, odor, secondhand smoke, or carcinogens. Same day shipping is available. This is a wonderful product if you want to quit smoking. Uh, my wife actually quit smoking mm-hmm. by using Smart Smoke. You can too. Excellent. Mike loves his so much he destroyed a recliner when he lost That's it one right. night. <laughs> but here's the best part. It costs 80% less than yeah. traditional tobacco products. And uh, really, it, that's the best part of all. You can actually save your life and spend a hell of a lot less money. To see all the styles, flavors, and strengths, uh, or to order refills, just click the Smart Smoke ad on our website at Smart Smoke. It we also costs eighty percent less than a recliner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even more. <laughs> yeah, maybe yeah, more. Yeah. Maybe eight hundred. I'm so disappointed <laughs> in my recliner. I think the thing that I'm most disappointed at uh, is the fact that. I want a, a recliner that's not going to go all the way back to like the sleeping position. Well, you want something and have like something that you can control. Electric. Mine, mine doesn't. I'm not going to go with electric. Oh, you should. I Mike. don't want to have the core. The core that. Well, don't you, you have to right. put it near the wall. What's that? It, you're, it's already near the wall. Just run it along the wall. You'll I don't want a cord. I don't. You you had just talked about the fact that you don't want an electric one. I never really weighed in. What are you playing? What are you doing care. over there? I'm finding you a song. He hasn't a dog in this fight. This <laughs> is he's setting up. What he's doing is he's setting up some sort of musical accompaniment. No, I, no, it's that's fine. What Mine's doing. on an extension cord. The extension cord is hidden away under a, under a carpeting under a rug. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's what he was looking what for. What does... Uh, kind of worse, it's electric it? boogie, woogie, woogie. Uh, you know, I'll look it up on Amazon right now. I might be going yeah. to look at what a recliner, does, although does, I can't afford them. What does a rececliner run on Amazon? That is how far... I bet, I bet six ninety nine. That is how far my life is going to the toilet. That's how much they cost? You yeah. get a good one, yeah. Oh, I've what I have to do is I have to, I, have to then, get a, I have to get a cash stash like Mark Ronick had. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Are you surprised that it actually was intact? No, I'm not sorry. Well, that, because it after, that's after you replaced it. Oh, well, true. <laughs> <laughs> Does he have a box of money? All I know I is did. that yesterday I come back from uh, going out and about, oh. yeah, and um, Mark Ronick has left me an envelope mm-hmm. with cash from our t shirt sales. From Reno. From Reno. Oh, that explains why Mark. And the last I checked, we are in. It's January twenty second. Right. (laughs) And I and I look, and that is an envelope full of cash that has been in his his possession since November tenth. And you know what? Enough time has passed that we have engineered, printed, and shipped a DVD that explained the event, and yet he still had the T-shirt. See, I look at it as found money. Found money. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, He kept finding it every morning. And then just it couldn't be any more like. Illegal drug drop-off money with <laughs> right. scratching the amount of you know money from Reno <laughs> yeah. written on the outside. <laughs> Where did you keep it? Well, I had it uh, at, at my house for a little while. Where did and you then... keep it in your house? Did you have a safe? In a drawer. You kept it in a drawer. Yeah, yeah, a drawer with a big money do- I don't, dollar sign on it. I don't think Lloyd and Marie are going to take it from me. But the, but the fact is, oh, oh, oh. oh. So we can talk about that. <laughs> yeah, you you kind of opened a door there, pal. Yeah, you kinda we'll we'll edit that out. <laughs> are you t- are you talking about it on the on the, your what what you really want? I left it at the there. Mark show? I I left it there. Oh, in you left a drawer at, at their house. Oh, okay, uh-huh. okay. Oh, this is. A- you know, when you say something to a group like this, yeah. we all immediately think you're ready to. You yeah. know what I wonder? Open What's the that? I can ask this without uh, sure. giving too much away about you living at home. Uh, what is? 
<laughs> is your bedroom at home? I can't home, believe I did that. <laughs> is your bedroom at your parents' house? Welcome to house, live radio. The same bedroom, like, is it set up the same way when you left? Because my bedroom at home and my parents' house is the same way when I left. Like, yeah, the posters, posters are my, still my there, child, everything's perfect. My childhood bedroom uh, is actually now more Maya's room when she stays with them. Oh, okay. Hold on just a second. And it's not the same. I want to stop the show for a second. Can you take pictures of your bedroom and bring them into my oh, house? Oh, that would be awesome. Or when you get a chance, can you yeah, take yeah, pictures of your yeah. bedroom so we can share those online? I have all my college online? posters. <laughs> okay, I want to see I that. walk in there, I was like, I was such a douchebag. I want yeah. to see my, that. My, my childhood bedroom is gone. Those days are bad. My childhood bedroom is gone because the house is no longer owned by the family, so I can't so do you that. Don't oh. wanna, you don't want to discuss anything, correct? Discuss what? Or discuss anything. The money? The, you know, the, uh, no. No. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, I guess that would be my answer. Yes. Would that be my answer, Mark? Uh, yes. Is okay. that your final answer? For now. How are Lloyd and Marie? Lloyd and Marie are wonderful. What's for dinner tonight? I have no idea. <laughs> What's she making for breakfast? I can guess. A lovely brisket. <laughs> nice, maybe with something on the side. Lots of Lox mm-hmm. and a bagel mm-hmm. in the morning. What's it's, that Dan Fogelberg song? Uh, Same old like Zion? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Somehow it just popped it out. Of the it's song. a good one, Mike. Let's have a taste of it wow. in just a moment. <laughs> That's better than the electric slide. There's no shame in living at home. No, not I until I was for those who do. You just give me a stop sign anytime. You just give me a stop. I mean, you put that hand up and give me a stop sign. I'll stop. Met my old lover at the grocery store. Oh, boy. Some may call it a safe house. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sure. I, I think it's nice that you have two places to go to. <laughs> <laughs> it's a luxury. It's My like having door, a vacation home. Their right. doors always open. Of That's course, very yes. kind. Yes. Of yes. Very and you spend a lot of time with your parents. I do during the yeah, week. They're, they're during the week and weekends. Friends of mine now. <laughs> That's the way that works. They're good. Yeah, people. Sure. You know what? You people. should pull pull. Uh, <laughs> See pull, now what you guys have done. Now I can't edit any of this. No, out. yeah, you no. should you should pull a page out of my playbook, and when anybody asks you, you just say your roommates. Ah, yeah, that's right. yeah. yeah your roommates. I don't have same old legs on Mike because that's a Christmas record. But if you want Dan Fogelberg, well, you have it though. I'm sure. Oh, of course, I have it at home. Yeah. But I yanked all the Christmas music. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Mark Ryan. <laughs> Mike, any time we change any arrangements in our day-to-day life, it's just part of the plan. Man, my lips are killing me right now. <laughs> really? Yeah, I, it's the dry cold that we're getting yeah, in, me in Washington, D.C. I have a, a Cesar Romero mustache cut that I've done. Oh, really? Oh, my oh, God. My God. Oh, yes, you Your mic's oh, been yeah. covering it. Let's, yeah, let me zoom in. I am outside. Yeah. And what happened? That's <laughs> terrific. I just decided my Too lips much. have been really chapped, and I cut it back uh, a little bit. Your lips hurt real bad. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> He kept eighteen hundred dollars in a drawer in his mommy and daddy's house for twelve months. <laughs> his name is Mark Bronick. He is our business manager. Things are in good hands when cash from an appearance you did in November shows up on your kitchen counter mm-hmm. in January. Longer than <laughs> Mark, will you enter- I will tell you, you, if I wasn't secure before, yeah. I'm secure now. The thing, things are hitting on all of okay. <laughs> Everything's going to be just fine. Young Master Mark, will you entertain a question? I'm surprised you didn't keep it in the glove compartment of your car. No, no, no. At any point, did you lay the money on a bed and roll in it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't roll in it, but I did take a bath with it. That, that's nice. I'm, well, talk about... Talk, La- laundering money Exactly. Again. There yeah. he goes. Yeah, it's a pretty <laughs> matter, Mike. Pretty song. Just thinking... Just so many like, directions this could go in. That's right. Mm. How about and when everybody's quiet, uh, you know, it's up to me. <laughs> that's and, right. Uh, you know, I. Uh, <laughs> just another Dan Fogelberg Is this the Dan Fogelberg collection? This is, this is what I carry with me. I have more at home. He was kind of a depressing singer. I think he might be one of Mark's. But Fogelberg? why would anybody have any reason to be depressed? <laughs> that's right. All is well. It's a part of the plan, Mike. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Dan Fogelberg. Only child alone. I have a question. <laughs> Do you feel like, you know, I'm playing a video game, Far Cry 3 now. Yeah. And there's a one moment in the game, a first-person shooter, where I have to hang glide out to this ship filled with pirates. Sure. And I land about a mile short, and I have to swim, oh. and there are sharks in the water. Sharks. Do you feel that way now, Mark? Uh, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Oscar. Ask your question. So, when I lived at home as an adult, <laughs> so. and I'm not saying you do. Sometimes you have, like, a hint of a ball to write, so. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, so here we go. Go ahead. I interrupt. Uh, I always 
thought it was interesting that when you're at home for an extended period of time, even when you're visiting, you're back from college, right? That a certain dynamic, the rhythm of your day and your interpersonal relationships with your parents kind of changes, mm -hmm. yeah, and it evolves. Mm -hmm. But some things still stay the same. Yeah. Like if you don't make your bed, you get a lot of ass. Huh. It doesn't right. matter how old you are. He won't if, have that problem. If, <laughs> if you, that's right. If, if you if you park behind them in the driveway, it's a big deal. Right. Right. Are sure. there things like that that you're finding in at the times you have an extended stay at your parents? That uh, uh, whenever I've stayed there for whatever the reason may be, sure. Uh, yes, yeah, counselor. they they would they would get a little annoyed if the room was a little bit messy. Well, sure. And yeah. the parking behind them in, at, in the driveway, great example. They yes. they can't stand that. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, but otherwise, I wouldn't know what you're talking about. Of course not. <laughs> but Marie is Marie is doing fine. Yeah, Marie's great. She's happy to have you well, it's, uh, it's visiting not, occasionally. One way to be sure. Well, there yeah, really is I, only one way to. When be I sure. come by, she's very happy to see me. Mm -hmm. Let's get her on the line. Let's just give her a call and yeah. see what's happening. I'm you know, sure and you guys be. can ask her some questions. Always okay. good to hear from Marie. Such nice people. The old hometown looks the same. <laughs> what the hell is that? Green grass of home. <laughs> Hello? Yes. Hi, Marie. Marie. Perfect. Hello. Who's, who's calling? It's the Mike O'Mara Show. It's the oh, gang. It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Oh, hello, boy. Remember, Hi, we, we had a good time with you at Christmas time. Or, oh, I, it was Or as wonderful. you call it, December. Wonderful. And uh, you're nice to have you back. You're here with the... <laughs> wonderful. Oh, whoa. <laughs> what wow. a wonderful Buzz party. is here. Oh, Oscar a, is here. What a great party. Yeah. Oh, thank it you. Was, it was a great, great party. to see you there, I Marie. just think you're all... The, you're, you're so talented, and right. it's so nice of you to open up these studios to Lloyd and I. And guess so who else? We could come by, and uh, you know, my, my son's such a uh, so pleased to be working with you. He's so happy. Yeah. He's so happy to be working with all of you. But sure. he, but there's not a day that goes by that he said, "I just wish I could do my own thing with Lowell." Yeah, yeah, oh, <laughs> yes. that's right. Really you know, he's here. Sunshine is here. Oh, hello, no. hi, baby doll. Hi, and it's How not Sunshine. She calls Eric Sunshine. She Eric is me, Sunshine. She calls me Angel. Angel, my fault. Uh, Eric Get is right. my Sunshine. That's right. And and uh, and uh, the other one, Eric is my Sunshine. Mark is my Angel. That's right. right. Yes, hello. Hi, uh, Mrs. Ronick. Hi, uh, Thank Oscar. you for coming on the program. How are you? So, when <laughs> your angel gets off work. Go Ravens. Nice. Yeah. Are right you excited? On. She is rooting for I'm them laying right down now. a wager. Of course. I hope you yes. win. Uh, thank you. <laughs> we I'm have, a big football fan. The odds are in your yes. favor. We, yes. we have been discussing some pet peeves that uh, you and your uh, kind husband have when Mark stays. Uh, I've never no pet peeves. My well, angel, well. my angel can do nothing wrong. Well, nothing big, but there, surely there's some. I small. like having the heat. He, it's wonderful. I cook for him. I clean for him. What, what's what? his favorite? I pick up his room. What's his favorite dish? His favorite dish? Yeah. Beyonce. Ah, <laughs> ah, ah, you so are you know, I've got a fabulous sense of humor. You really sure do. do. Just quickly, do. he always yes. leaves the ba his backpack in the foyer. What is that music I'm hearing in the background? Oh, it's Aerosmith. The song is called Angel. Angel. <laughs> That's my baby. Yeah. That's my baby. That's the love of my life. I love him more than life itself. He's always leaving his backpack when he gets home from work yes. in the foyer. Yes. Yes. Because, you know, I still go to elementary school. That's a, that's a pet peeve. It's a little, well, but what I do, I like to, in the morning, uh -huh. in the morning, if he's going to have a particularly long day, yeah. and I just want to tell all of you, I hope you are aware of how hard Mark How works, what? How hard right. Mark works for the show. Thank Thank you. You. And if he's going to have a particularly heavy day, As sure. does, I so will uh, make him a lunch. I'll pack him a lunch. I'll make him peanut butter and jellies with the crust cut off. Right. Right. He loves and, that. His, and he likes that. <laughs> and he also, he, I, back to, I pack a, uh, a small milk, a small chocolate mm -hmm. milk, low fat. I, I pack a uh, I have peanut butter and jelly I with think the crust nice. cut off and a box of animal crackers. Yes. Yeah, nice Sometimes treat. goldfish if I'm good. Yes, go, he loves goldfish. Yeah. I like the yeah. fact that you're serving he, peanut he, butter. He and his best friend love goldfish. Yes, we do. <laughs> they, they truly do. Lowell? Yes, Lowell. Uh -huh. I like the fact that you serve him peanut butter. That way he's not mixing meat and dairy. Yeah. Right. That's, uh, th well, we don't, we don't practice that. I know it's you don't. But it's We're not good. orthodox. Why do you always have to do that? Yeah, Rob. Right. What is wrong with you? There's not a thing wrong with you. I thought you were 8% Jewish yourself. Do you work? When Mark comes home, one eighth, twelve and a half percent. One eighth, twelve and a half percent. Yes. Yeah. So that's more than eight percent. Yes. Well, I would suggest you behave yourself. Done. Exactly. Yes. But anyway, does back it to bother me. you when he comes home or comes for a visit and has a snack and it spoils his appetite for supper? Oh, no, and he does that. <laughs> He eats constantly. Yeah. And it's very frustrating. I'm, I'm just glad that he stays so thin. Yes. It's it's wonderful. Like but, a rail. Uh, yeah, the other day I, I saw him, I heard I heard sobbing. 
Oh, up, in, yeah. up in his bedroom. Oh, yeah. And I said, what's the matter? And it's the same old theme. It's a recording thing. He wishes he was as successful as Lowell. Yes, I do. Well, sure. That's that's what it is. My mom is so perceptive. <laughs> She's on top of it yeah. all. Never she's got, underestimate. She's got the third eye. The mom radar. Do you think thing. you spend more time with him or with his brother Eric? Oh well, of course Eric is in New York. Yeah, yes, right. pursuing his music career. Right. Mm-hmm. Very so successful. As I well. don't get a chance to spend as much time with Mark as I would like to. Darling, are you coming over for dinner s- this evening? Uh, we'll see, Mom. I don't know yet. I've got a busy schedule. Today. My, uh, would you like me to pack you something for the road? Please, that would be wonderful. Would you like to make? How about I make you a snack and I leave it in the fridge? Okay, that's you, great. You can heat it up when you come home. That's well, awesome. Do you? But you have to. Do you have the juice boxes for? Yes, me? I've got. Got okay. the juice boxes, so juicy nice. juice, one hundred percent juice. Isn't that good? <laughs> I don't like. He always used to throw a tantrum because he wanted Kool Aid, like the other kids. Right. I said Kool Aid is going to stunt your growth yeah. and rot your teeth. That's right. And then, of course, he would roll on the floor until I hit him with a wooden spoon. Yes. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. That was Michael Mara's mother. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I've got to run, boys. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Marie. Marie. Bye, bye, Angel. Always Love a you. pleasure. My Marie. Marie Ronick. She's the best. That's She's Marie. So glad we called her. Yeah. Yeah. That's Marie Ronick. So, uh, yeah. Nice so I. So, so I kept the eighteen hundred dollars in my drawer. Uh-uh. And, uh, See that pivot? And it was very safe. <laughs> and, yeah, it's just uh, if for future reference, uh, cash should be deposited the weekend morning after the performance, Understood. like the Monday following. Yeah, because it was I was a unless concerned. of course it's a banker's holiday. Go, go on get Tuesday. it. Go, go get the envelope. Oh sure. I'm going to show everybody the envelope. This is this is this is yeah. the truth. This was an envelope, not a shoebox. A, yeah. a, a, a cash deposit envelope. What's that from the bank? Yeah, uh, well, it's an envelope. No. Oh, just a regular like uh, uh, mail. No, I'll show you what, what I. This is what I literally. This is what I walked into my kitchen to yesterday afternoon. Is any of it bundled? Please tell me it's bundled. I'm not sure. We'll I would love to sure. see a thick rubber band. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. <laughs> it, it was. It, you know, I, I I put it now. Here we go. Uh-huh. There it is. Jeez. <laughs> it's in rough shape. Wow. Oh, and written on it, it says Mark, and what does it say under it? It says Reno merch. Cash. Well, you yeah. got to label it. It's just yeah. like when you're putting food in the freezer. Otherwise, you don't know what it is. That's quite an envelope. It is. There Maya it is. was very impressed with that. Yeah. I'm sure. Sure. I'm surprised. She thought it was a million dollars. Yeah, I'm surprised Maya left it here. That's it. That's it. So that's, that's Papa, I brought an envelope home from your office. Here you go, Mark. <laughs> oh, thanks. Get that right to the bank. Uh, it's got a deposit slip I'll do and everything. Two get that, get that right to the bank. Thank you very much. That's right. Yes. And we I, will report I, it. Thank doesn't you. it look like that envelope's been like rustled with? Yeah. Or rubbed? Looks like it's yeah. been handled a little bit. That's from the bathwater. It's been stuffed in someone's crotch at least four times. That's how it came back. It came back from Reno taped to his body. Yeah. (laughs) Around his thigh. Well, thank you for doing that, Mark. Yes. Always a pleasure Uh, to talk to you. I'm glad you you opened up about that. Appreciate that. It's about the money. And, Mark, anytime you want to purge, anytime you want any uh, little therapy, you know, I've used it on the show for years and it works for me. When when there's a time for that, I will definitely take you up on it. Very good. Thank you, uh, Angel. Speaking of purging, I waited for hockey and now all they're doing is breaking my heart. I know. know Why did you Let's go, Caps. Rock the red. It was so telling when you just wrote on Facebook last night, this isn't much fun this yeah. is the same fun and the fact is uh i don't like apologists if i want to bitch about my sports team please allow me to and don't apologize yeah. for, i don't like apologists for anybody yeah i'm sorry expect, about that no but it's the guy going yeah here's the funny thing the number one apology for my beloved hockey team the washington capitals right who are now playing after their shortened year uh, 48 games that's all we're going to get mm-hmm. and they come out and they have just sucked mm-hmm. royally mm-hmm. and here's what you get well it's only the first game. And the only point I make to those people, those apologists, wasn't it the only first game for the team they're playing against? Precisely. Right. Exactly. And then they're out of condition. Uh-huh. They only had a week to get ready. Well, didn't the team they played also only have a week to get didn't ready? Didn't they all have time yeah. so to get I'm, in I'm condition? Tired. What is this what is this deal? Washington Capitals fans, okay? Uh-huh. You need to get edgier. You need to get all right. Philly and Boston on your team. Yeah, Mike, don't be too hard on the apologists. They mean well. <laughs> they always mean well. They do well. mean well. <laughs> and it sucks. It frustrates me. You have a general manager that's been there too long. You have teams, uh, teammates that have been there too long. And you have guys that are not being held accountable. Are the you last discussing time... the Capitals or WJFK? <laughs> 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 or it could be anywhere. Yeah. Uh, any show. Uh, yes, go ahead. I was I was wonder I saw a lot of this action on Facebook and I said to myself, well, a lot of these players have been overseas playing, so yes. they should be conditioned. Mm-hmm. You would think they would yeah. be in game shape. There's there, they say well, maybe it's jet lag. There is game shape and then there is NHL game shape. Uh, oh, so I'm not okay. Sure. So, yeah. I'm not sure NHL is the next level. 
Yeah, I mean that's uh, they say because you have to escape that. But when you wait for something and then you're you're ready for your superstars yes. and you hear how scary talented these mm-hmm. guys are compared to the other team, you expect your team to step up. So I'm here to tell the Capitals step up. And now that uh, my boycott the first home game where I wasn't going to go, right? Now that that's out of the, the woods, yeah. Much as I bitch about him, I'd sure like to go see him live. Yeah, leave any uh, if you have any tickets for Mike, leave them in an envelope yeah. on his kitchen table. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they win. Just want to say that we've got a Thursday game and a Sunday matinee game coming up against Buffalo, and uh, fun to see. I'm free. Get at him. Uh, so let me know. Uh, anyway, we'll take a break. When we come back, it's Rob and his magic audio vault. Yay. Lots of audio out there. Lots of controversy. We'll take a break and come right back. Welcome, willkommen. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. We are brought to you by Encore Insurance Services, LLC. You know, if the people at Encore treat you as well as they have treated Oscar Santana, you're going to get a square deal and you're going to get to do so easily. In this day of complicated financial models and everything we have to struggle with, whether it's health care, whether it's, uh, you know, getting the, the paycheck or mortgaging the house and all the crap we deal with, it's nice when things are simplified for you. If you would like a free insurance quote from Encore Insurance, it's this easy. Call this number and they'll do it for you for free. They do all the work. 866-347-5748, or you can go to their website. That's S-M-A-R-T-T-E-R-M.com, smartterm.com, mm-hmm. and they will do the work and get you uh, great rates. And Oscar did it. You you never look back. You I did it, it one it's time. A, it's, a nice, it's a peace of mind that I never thought I could have. Right. So the most important thing is uh, you can save money on life insurance, and that's a good thing. And also, they're a wonderful supporter of this show. Mm-hmm. Give them a call, 866-347-5748, and get the rates you deserve. Licensing and disclaimer info at smartterm.com. Let them know you appreciate them as much as we do. Encore Insurance Services. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Thank it's you. the Audio Vault Yay. for 2D, and uh, today's date is uh, Wednesday, Jan 23, 2012. It's been a week of admissions, Mike. Mm-hmm. We're waiting for Beyonce to admit that she lip sunk. I guess you can't say lip sunk. Tia Daniel. Leone admitted it. He lip-sync. lied a little bit. Yeah, and that's not Tia Leone. It's Mante Teo. <laughs> that's what I said. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. And also a great admission that I think you'll enjoy from country country singer on King of the Licorice Hat, Blake Shelton, was on Entertainment Tonight last night. I like night. Blake Shelton. He made a great admission last night. Can I add something? Yeah. I just want to be honest. I have been drinking during the course of this day and during the course of this interview. I want to be honest with you, Cheryl, and you, Nancy. I think Thank that was you the best so thing much. you could say. Thank you. Good out. We appreciate it. Thank you. That enough might be reason enough to tune in The Voice. Was he? Was he baked? When he was on camera, I mean, he was, was he... he was very relaxed. Loose. He has that. a reputation as being kind of a partier. Right? Yes, and <laughs> didn't he sing that song, Honey Bee? What's very that? catchy. Is that... I think that was his big song. Is that I about drinking? Think, no, it's no, about no. it's about how he likes some chick. I don't oh, know. Okay, very um, good. Manti Teo. I think the only thing to add to it today is the name of the girl whose identity was stolen. Of course, is Diane O'Mara. That's Diane right. O'Mara, uh-huh. <laughs> and the tape isn't that great. And it's, and I just like saying, saying her name. And for all the people on Facebook mm-hmm. that, in their twisted, excited, we get, yeah, hey, very, very she's the one. Uh-huh. You know, a lot of people really got all excited right. sending me messages that sure. would indicate that she was the scam artist. No. Well, she wasn't. She had her likeness used. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, but Diane people, O'Mara. People are pre-programmed to hate everyone named yes. O'Mara. To distrust My name is not Lene Kua. My name is Diane. I've never- Her name is Diane. Diane. Mm-hmm. Um, my identity was stolen. It was stolen, and I'm really not happy about that. I was never related to a disc jockey. Uh, the fact <laughs> is, there's there, there's Michael O'Mara, yeah. and then there's Diane O'Mara, right. and he doesn't know me, and I most certainly don't know him. Hey, I have a question for you. Yeah. Are you related to that golfer? No. No? Well, maybe distantly like cousin. Because what his name is, his name is Mark O'Mara. Mark O'Mara. Yeah, years no ago. Relation. He won the Masters. What about your identity? <laughs> I don't care. But it was stolen. I don't care. I mean, if they're going to use me, let them use me. <laughs> Are you psyched about the Harbaugh? I like the Harbaugh, the brothers. <laughs> yes, Jim. Why do they make such a big deal about those two being brothers? <laughs> There's a tape that has surfaced. It's an older tape of Jim Harbaugh addressing quarterback coaches mm-hmm. and what they should tell their quarterbacks. And he tells you how to hold the ball and where your hand should be during the snap. I think you'll enjoy this advice. Take that, that knuckle right there. On your finger, that, that uh, pointer finger should go squarely right in the middle of his <laughs> Right in the middle of it. Uh-huh. Find that's where that finger, that's where that knuckle goes. Right there. So it's offset his to butt? the right. 
It's a uh, she's using oh, a, a colloquialism for his butt. Yeah, the um, how shall I say the, the the deepest part of the crevice. Okay, I understand. <laughs> like that's where you yeah. want to put your neck. What a dirty bird! Yeah, you really shouldn't say that. I don't like that. Yeah, that's bad touch. You know, J- which do you like better? Who do you think's more handsome? Uh, do you think Jim Harbaugh or John Harbaugh? <laughs> They're both good-looking men. <laughs> They're both very good-looking. One coaches the right eye. Yeah, the other one coaches the, the niner. Niners. Right. Niners. Yeah. Out there in the bay. Yes. Hey, oh, Rob. You know, yeah, hey, Rob, do the, the football, do they have umpires or referees? God, Mike, they have referees. You're wrong. They have both. I got you. <laughs> Let's have a little fun with music. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't done this in a while, and I like playing this jingle, too. So this, you're going to like this, Mike. Let's have some fun with music. Let's do. One of the ways you can make a song sound sad or have sort of a musical conflict is by mm-hmm. using minor notes and minor chords, right? Right, yeah. and I think that's one of the younger some of, people. Some of, no, 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 minor, like not major. Like oh. they're, they're darker. Say, for example, an Oscar for a, to illustrate this song, you'll know by REM. That's me in the corner. Well, I know that Losing song too. You don't have to defer to Oscar. I'm, well, not, I'm not 300 years old. Mike, I'm assuming that you know this oh, song. Oh, thank you very yeah. much. Okay. I was an all rock DJ. That's why you're. But my lips me. hurt real bad. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe it's because your identity was stolen. I don't know, but it doesn't care. Let's play the aria. But one of the reasons this song has its sound is that they're using minor chords. Right. So some guy takes the song, puts it in a computer, breaks it down track by track, Mm -hmm. and electronically turns those minor notes into major notes. Listen to how he turned uh, Losing My Religion into uh, basically shiny, happy people. This is really cool. That's me in the corner. That's me in the spot. Sounds the same. No, it doesn't. No, it sounds doesn't. exactly the same. No, it's a, it, it's a different pitch to it. They've yeah. pitched it, but they've turned all the notes. To I'm looking at you guys. Yeah. I'm not fighting this one. It sounds I, the same. It sounds absolutely different to me. It, it sounds it more is. similar than I expected, but I hear a difference. It, and, so, and, it sounds like somebody turned up the volume. <laughs> I mean, I like the I like the original <laughs> because it's minor. Maybe this was a miss. No, this is a hit. <laughs> Mark, do you Sometimes hear it? Sometimes I home definitely runs. do hear okay, it. Okay, no, now listen again. Here's sad. That's me in the corner. Down. Okay. That's me in the spot. Here's happy. That's me in the corner. Are you sure you didn't just put the same That's track on? Don't two get years. involved. You don't okay. hear the difference. Okay. <laughs> Audio vault <laughs> fail. Oh. <laughs> And we have a title for today's show. <laughs> you know what? Maybe I... I'm just having fun. <laughs> i got to know my audience. Maybe some brighter people out there are enjoying it. <laughs> and I bet spe- Tab's digging on it. Yeah, I'm sure he is. I bet Tab's enjoying it. I bet Johnny Midnight's loving it, Tap-ha. too. Tap-ha. <laughs> Tap-ha. Right. I-, I decided that Tab Patterson is <laughs> Tap- Rob. What is Tap-ha? Tap-ha. Is Tomo Tap-ha. for Rob. So he's Tap-ha. He said Tap-ha. that to me today. I really did laugh yes. out loud. Oh, Tap-ha is Tap-ha funny. Tap-ha and Tomo. <laughs> Can I have my... Uh, my yes, of course. Audio <laughs> Don't fail. Yeah. <laughs> you will like this. Speaking of intelligence, of the, of the smart people that enjoyed that oh, previous here segment, here's Arnold Schwarzenegger and a montage of him in his movies saying words that are longer than two syllables. <laughs> Just taking the lamentation of consider. Discussion problems inevitable. Unmedicated. Benefactors. Count that act inconsiderate. And Appetite fluctuation. Manipulate. California. It's a Soviet Potterin 9.2 millimeter. Sabotage systems model 101. Living tissue over metal endoskeleton. Basic psychology is among my subroutines. The dynamics of human peer bonding. The Soviet Nerve 6. Draving psychotics. Oh, this is embarrassing. So there you go. <laughs> oh my God, that made up for the other thing. Yeah. He talks good. Now, there are some porn movies out there that are great. Yeah. And there are some porn movies out there where the idea doesn't really gel mm-hmm. with me. How would you describe a great porn movie? One that really gets you off. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's one way. Good night, everybody. Wow. Thank you. We're here all week. This next one, I'm about to play you a clip from the trailer and a small clip from the, uh, from the film itself. Okay. Really didn't work for me. Oh. All right. It's called, uh, let me get this right, Sponge Knob Square Nuts. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, and the lead oh, is actually in a big SpongeBob suit like you would see at like, see, a theme park. This right there, That's I'm not creepy. liking this. Yeah. Yeah. Right now you're going into, when, when you, it's the guys that would like this. Uh, to are me, are, are, this is, this so is the land of the world. sick. Yeah. Yeah, it really right. is. How but, did you find it? Uh, it was actually, uh, <laughs> it, was, it was on his fluffy <laughs> website. It was, uh, yeah, it was, uh, you know, it said, you might also like this. Uh, I think you'll enjoy it, Mike, because he does a reasonably good impression of SpongeBob, oh, no. which is what makes it creepy. But let's start with the theme. Who lives in a vibrator under the sea? So horny and dirty, he tried to hump me. We're on the radio. Weird yellow sex 
He forgets that. We're on the radio. I know. Just barely. How are you doing with your filter? Do you know the law for that? Yeah. I think we're, we're. I think we're. We're kind of. We, I think we're in dangerous territory here. I think we're okay here. All right. You want me to do what, Sponge Knob? Give okay. me a sponge, baby, Sandy. Well, this is sick. Then. Right, I'm Let's totally uncomfortable with that. That's very strange. Well, what I'm saying is, I'm trying to use the audio vault to tell you. Yes. Don't look at this porn film. It's no good. <laughs> yeah, okay. Try it again in a major key. Okay. Ah! <laughs> There you go. All right. Nice. Right after you time the news right. <laughs> <laughs> we will close with uh, the show The Burn, and this is uh, Jeffrey Ross talking about Mante Teo. This is a funny man. Okay, good. I just want to say this week's show is dedicated to the memory of my Hawaiian girlfriend, Kuka Kaka Kaka, <laughs> who suddenly died of leukemia when her car crashed into a unicorn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this Mante Teo story has everything, a fake death, a made-up girlfriend, and my imaginary interest in sports. <laughs> he claims he had an intimate relationship on a tropical island with a figment of his imagination. Not only is this ridiculous, it's a lot of castaway. <laughs> <laughs> that is your magic audio ball. Thank right. you very much, Rob. We will take a break, come back with buzz and news. This is the Mike O'Mara Show. I can see all of you. <laughs> He's ignoring us. No, I'm not. I'm trying, to, trying to actually do something for the first time that nobody in this room is doing. Get the timing right. We're back on the Mike O'Mara Show, ladies and gentlemen. Glad to have you with us. Without further ado, let's get right to it. And it's time for Buzz and the News. Take it away, Buzz. Does anybody like, I really... have peripheral vision. You're all going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, didn't, like I couldn't tell. Normally, you at least shoot me a little. That's right. I've got, I, got the, I got the clock over here. I know what's going on. Come on. All right. Take it away, Buzz. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. We're brought to you today by the Mike O'Mara Show's 2013 VIP packages. Enhance your vip Enjoy all our bonus shows including the video on demand feeds plus the live video feed of our weekly show, all now available for your mobile devices. Some packages also come with the DVD of our Reno show and the Gabe Strine animated series. 20 Soon to come real sponsors. <laughs> the 2013 yearly subscriptions available now at MikeOmeraShow.com. Mike, make no, no mistake, this pays our bills as well. <laughs> Yes, it does. Just click, on, <laughs> just, just, click, just click on the word bonus at the top left-hand side of our homepage. That's the Michael O'Mara Show 2013 VIP package. Michael O'Mara will be reminded of that later. <laughs> I kind of like having this. Here. I do, too. Hey, how you doing, Buzz? Very authoritative. How you, you doing? don't have the lowest voice in the room anymore. No, I don't. Mm. Audio oh, vault oh, fail. <laughs> <laughs> really? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I thought it turned out pretty well. I, it always turns out well. It's always good. Not always. Well, I think no. this, is, this is interesting. At the very moment, another American college campus was under lockdown because of a shooting yesterday. Someone using a business's Facebook page wrote us to complain about our gun coverage. From Olivier Farms, a goat ranch in Louisiana, the author wrote... All of a sudden, Buzz is reporting negative gun news every day. I understand this is a hot issue, but I believe this is typical slanting of reporting, just like all media outlets. Our response is simple. All of a sudden, 20 children died. Is, now, when you say our response, are you saying our response? That's the editorial, like in the, room? the editorial we. Oh, the editorial you've been able to see when yeah, you're speaking with, with, for us. But when you're in a room right. with, with three other guys. I'll, I'll change it for you. I'll change it to I. Okay, thank okay. you. And my I, response is My response is As a rule, I fall down squarely on the side of the goat farmers. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, I, as so, always. You see, that's why. Yeah, you didn't want to upset Rob. I know. That's I right. forgot yeah. about his love of goats. You, you, you know, but you know what happens if you get Rob out there. You know, He's going to get very, very upset and shoot you. And the Goat. Hi, Buzz. I heard that news story. So no my, one loves guns and pot like me. So my response. All of a sudden, 20 children died at the hands of a military-style assault weapon, causing Americans, including gun owners, to rethink our gun laws. We have seen stories in which guns protected their owners, but they pale in number to the hundredfold more stories we've seen with a negative outcome. If we should be ashamed of anything, I think it is not reporting these stories all along because they had become so commonplace. Yep. Now about that latest campus shooting. Students took cover under desks, and at least six shots rang out on the campus of Lone Star College in Houston. It was apparently the result of an argument between two people with guns. At least one is a student there. 
Both men are being held by police. Three people were wounded, including both of the armed individuals. A fourth person suffered a heart attack. There were 10,000 students on campus at the time of the shooting. Buzz, let me ask you this question. Yes. Have you, uh, I know I have, Mm -hmm. I have never gotten more ink dedicated to one issue Mm -hmm. than people, and on one side of that issue, Mm -hmm. and the people that love their guns, on telling me why guns are okay and why they love it. I'm talking about terrorism. I'm Mm -hmm. talking about anything. I've never gotten more feedback than this passionate minority Mm -hmm. that loves their guns. I've never seen anything like it. And I've never seen any. At risk I, I'm, of painting, I'm stunned. At, at risk of painting with a broad brush, it's almost like they have a singular interest. Yeah. Like, that's it. And, that's all they got. And they're, Does they're, it define they, them? I've gotten, I can tell you, and it's not just the uh, messages that I get, it's the length of the messages yes. I get. And I honest, honestly believe that when all this washes out, we will come to the realization that this passionate minority you spoke of uh, does not represent the majority of responsible gun owners. Well, I thought what your response to that was very measured and very well thought mm-hmm. out. And, you know, you motivate me sometimes when, you, you, when you're you that controlled and you, you think out these. I'm going to do the same thing. Screw you, you gun jerks. Uh, no, well, I, such I, language. F you. Seriously. I, I, screw you little boys that get excited about your John Wayne and your guns and the fact that you're going to kill everybody that comes into your house. Lick it. I, the fact is you don't need it. You don't need them. F you. There you go. I I'm disagree. tired of it. Very measured. I know very you well disagree. I, dis- well, I, I know you disagree, but you also don't own a gun. So, I, but I would you know. if I could. You'd be, but, you know, why can't? You. Because, because he's from DC, and he's also from Bolivia. Yeah, but you, you know, would you really like load up your house with three hundred guns? You come from a generation, and this is generational too, mm-hmm. that a lot of people have. I think a misguided love of firearms. Here's the fact: these are destructive things that yes. can kill people. I'm all for responsible humanity. I don't want to hear responsible gun ownership. I want to hear people that just once and for all think about the people, the seven-year-olds and the six-year-olds that get a hole through their jaw, blowing the lower part of their head across the room and sticking it to the wall, and not the fact that, you know what, I've got a right and the founding fathers. I want people to really, if they publish the photographs of those little six-year-olds and seven-year-olds and they put them on the news, it would take one fucking news cycle for people to realize what these things do. And you can play with them all you want, and you can take them, and you can target shoot, and you can pretend that you are effing Rambo. But at the end of the day, what comes out of that chamber can blow someone's head and splatter it around the wall. And it can do it to that minority that's coming through your door that you're so effing afraid of. And can it can also do it to a six-year-old child that you happen to have brought into the world, and it happens every single week. And all you have to do is look at the gun shows last week where it happened as well. Right. Um, look, you want to have a gun? Have a gun. Just this love affair. How about loving your fellow man as much as you love the right to have firearms? Humanity. You said End it. of speech. I'm sorry. I know, and incidentally, don't burden me with your response. You're not going to change my mind. Well, it I'm, really gets me upset. Well, and I'm I talking mean, about the people I, I think, that are writing think, it, well, not look, you. You have every right to say, this is your show. Yes. But, but that type of response is yes. the same type of response that you're yelling about on the other side. You're right. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I like to shout, too. Sometimes I like to get I like to get emotional, too, and irrational. And a lot of my feelings are irrational. And you know what? I, I like to keep an open mind once in a while. But I have been inundated. I'm sorry to use up all no, your news all right. time. We're all right. I have been so inundated, I would give anything. To be inundated with other issues. I really would. But when I hear about another shooting yesterday in Texas, I'm just getting tired of it. Getting yeah. tired of all this. And I'm pissed off. And I'm pissed off at the whole thing. And it was done by a gun. You know what? That's pisses, it. End what, of story. What That's pisses all me about. off is that there are not as many people as pissed off as you are. And yeah. I think we should be. I just get tired of it. It's like, come on. Yeah, I'm with Talk you. about something else, for God's sake. And there I am. Hypocrite. I've talked about it. <laughs> There. Let's, let's talk about something else, then. <laughs> Sorry. The, uh, Ku- oh, my blood pressure. I'm going to have to go back to the ER. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do right. that. The Ku Klux Klan has been putting recruitment flyers on windshields in Clarksville, Tennessee, and that's prompted complaints, especially since the flyers refer to the late Dr. King as a known communist. How else are we supposed to get membership? Police say there's nothing they can do about the flyers since it's free speech, but they urge people to call the number on the flyer to complain. <laughs> uh, Mark, now that I'm calming down a little bit, yeah. in post-show, edit that out a little bit to make me seem a little nicer. Okay, you got it. Thank you very much. Feel free. Use your best judgment. What if we put classical music behind it? That would be lovely. (laughs) No, I don't like to say F you. 
the people. I don't like to get so mad, but I mean, so many messages about this. Mike, what you don't seem to understand is, and I'm sorry, and I'm cutting the buzzes. We're time. quite all right. Sorry. And finally, we continue to turn our backs on one of the country's biggest threats, however, zombies. Zombies! A yes. Con- concerned citizen tr- Scott Pelly. Concerned citizen tried to warn us about the zombies Saturday in Clarksville, Tennessee, but no one would listen. His slurred speech, bloodshot eyes, and strong smell of alcohol might have had something to do with that. Uh Uh-oh. I'm Muzz Burbank on the Mike O'Mara Show. Sorry to everybody for that rant. Sometimes I just get a little frustrated and I get really, really uptight. What? You about like the, about about you know people getting shot. You feel it's, right. it's something that, that concerns me. I it's bet you feel better now that you've gotten out. Yes, I do. And for all the people that I may have insulted, I am really, really glad I said it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Our show today was brought to you by the Amazon page at MikeOmeraShow.com. If it's a new you in the new year, shop our Amazon page for fitness and exercise gear or the right tools for eating right. You'll also find everything you need. Help us out. We mentioned it before. MikeOmeraShow.com slash Amazon. Tomorrow, maybe we'll have uh, like deep breaths uh-huh. and a more reasoned debate. And we'll let Oscar, I won't start screaming as right. soon as Oscar said he'd want to own a gun. And we can talk, no we won't. We'll, we'll try to be funny tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. <laughs> yeah. Let's do that. We're, we're going to be. Tr- we're gonna try to be entertaining and funny and do the things that we do on this show that make you laugh. Occasionally I just lose it. Can't help myself. You okay? With that said, have a fabulous day. Bye-bye, everybody. So long. Ciao, ciao. Thank you. Sponsored by Viagra.